All right, Shalom. First off, give all praise to Yahweh. By Shimmy Hoshai, by Shimmy Krakadash. The ones to the apostles and the elders of the GMS. Salutes and honors to the elect. All the brothers across the four corners who are enduring. And truth and sincerity in the women children who follow. So as you can see, this um this installment is called When the Lights Go Out. And I got an article here from uh, express.co.uk that says, uh, the heading is World War Three U.S. secretly launched three nuclear rockets from Antarctica to test EMP on Russia. Now, it says on e uh, a EMP on Russia, but it very well could be an EMP attack here on American soil. And like I said, this, uh, this is about what happens when the lights go out? I am going to read a little bit from this article. I haven't really, you know, got into it yet. So, uh, this will be my live reaction from that. But also, um, I want to go over a, uh, a movie I just watched. It's just bringing up this article sparked me to, you know, want to do a little research on YouTube. And I found a really good, um, it was a, let me see. A docudrama. All right, it's called Blackout, and it's on YouTube. You can check it out. Uh, it's actually really good. I I thought they were the real thing, uh, and you know, then it made me want to do research on that. Like I said, because I thought it was the real thing, but uh, it was turned out it was this um, docudrama. It's basically a uh, documentary style. Uh, synopsis of what will happen if, like, uh, Britain lost power for a week. And it goes through day one, day two, day three, day four, and so on. But, uh, it is really good. You know, I definitely recommend you brothers watch it to get into the spirit to, to the scriptures speak when you watch things like that. And this is everything that we've been speaking of. It's shown right here in, uh, this documentary. Okay? So, uh, since we on this, I'm just I'm gonna go into this right now, and then we'll go back to the article. But uh, it takes place the the lights go out and it's in Britain, um, and it has a a few different people that it follows. It follows like a, a prepper guy, it follows a uh, a brother and a sister, and it follows uh, two other guys that are just like lost trying to find their way, and it follows a mom and a daughter. So, with the prepper guy, you know, he's all, he has his generator, he's purifying water, he's standing the third, you know, he's good, but, um, what happens with him is eventually, um, the world catches up to him, alright, people get when he has a generator, people break in his house, um, they end up with no food, and then he ends up having to go loot, okay, also, matter of fact, I'm going to break it down day by day. Day one, or night one, everything is cool. Everybody, you know, they're like, okay, the lights went out. It'll be fine. Day two, the lights are still out, okay? Now people are coming to be on a little bit panic. You know, uh, the, the traffic is terrible, you know, because there's no traffic system. Everybody's just going, and, you know, you got to get it how you live, you know, People are, are running through res a lot of their resources on day two. Day three is when pretty much all hell broke loose. That's when, you know, you can't get gas. There's no more food in the stores. People are starting to riot. A lot of people were doing um, what I would call typical nigga shit. And looting stores for flash screens and things of that nature. But, you know, how's that going to help you in the blackout? But, to go back to our, our characters or whatnot, you got the guys that are just running around trying to, you know, get from one place to another. You know, they had to steal cars. They had to siphon gas. They had to, you know, do a lot of things to basically get it how they live. Okay. Um, the brother, the sister, the first night they were trying to go to their mom's house and, uh, with the lights being out, 
I guess they were, like, in the middle of an intersection or something like that, and a, a car came through and, like, uh, hit them. So they were, their whole episode was in a hospital and what it would be like in a hospital in that situation. Like I said, this is a real good movie. I'm, a, I'm telling you pretty much what the movie is about, but you, you can go see it for yourself. Um, so with the brother and the sister in the hospital, he's in a coma and she's basically videotaping. Everything is a, a point of view from either a video camera or a cell phone. Um, so that they can, that's why it's, it's actually really good. It's like a, a point of view, um, movie. So with the, the mother and the daughter. They're going from one city to the next, and then they uh, they encounter the the lines at the gas station. They can't get gas. They run out of gas, and then they're on the road, and they got to get picked up by a stranger. And it goes through how scary that can be, and having to trust somebody. And should I trust somebody? When we know the scriptures say that the love of many shall wax cold. And that's what all of these characters were actually going through, the love of many wax and cold, because either they couldn't get gas, or somebody was breaking in their house, or, uh, you know, just all different types of scenarios. There was riots going on in the city. On day, was that day four, that's when, like, the, the military came in and started setting up checkpoints they wanted to go to the other city the mother and the daughter but they weren't able to and it says that in the scriptures we're gonna get that too but um they weren't able to go into the city because of the martial law everything was blocked off and it was at night they wouldn't let nobody in wouldn't let nobody out okay so the uh the prepper guy who was fully prepared he was he had his generator he had a garden. He had uh, water. Okay, but this is Britain. There's no guns allowed. Eventually, people, like I said, people crept in his house. They stole all his food, stole his generator, beat him up. And then they had nothing. So they set up these checkpoints. These uh, checkpoints that you can go to if you needed services. Which, those are going to be your concentration camps. If they ever set up a checkpoint and say, hey, if you need food, if you need shelter, if you need whatever, come to these these um, locations, come to these places, and we'll have, you know, we'll, we'll have supplies for you. So with that, you know, they went there and then there was nothing. But like I said, those are your... Your um, your concentration camps. That's where they're gonna get you to take the mark of the beast. That's about the only thing they really didn't show in this was the mark. But uh, it's still like I said, a really good show. I definitely recommend it. Um, but the 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 prepper guy he ended up having to break down and go into a store and loot, and there was another guy in there, and they got into a confrontation. So. It's definitely something that I recommend. Blackout. Catch it on YouTube. Alright, so we're going to get into this article a little bit. It says the U.S. government ran a series of nuclear tests over South over the South Atlantic Ocean to test the electromagnetic posts in space, a documentary revealed. And this is from uh, February 10th of 2019. This Operation Argus was a series of high atmospheric nuclear weapons tests conducted between August and September of 1958 over the South Atlantic Ocean. The whole project was highly classified and took just 11 days. It was carried out by the Defense Nuclear Agency during, Cold, during the Cold War period. It was proposed by scientist uh, Nicholas Christophilios as a means to verify whether high altitude a nuclear detonation will create a radiation belt in extreme upper in the extreme upper regions of the Earth's atmosphere. Basically, they back in the day they did testing 
on EMPs to see how they would work. Why? Because they knew that eventually they would have to use the EMP. Now they said Russia because it was Cold Era, Cold War era, um, the, the Cold War era, <laughs> you know, pretty much. But with 9/11, with all these different false flag attacks, there's a precedent that's been set that the government will attack its people. And it showed it also in um in the in the video in the movie or whatnot. It, he said, you know, people trust in the government. People think that the government is there to save them. Well, you gotta save yourself, really. Really, if you ain't got your high body shot, you ain't got nothing. But that's basically talking about uh, trusting trusting in the shadow of Egypt, going down to Egypt and not of you know the high body shimmy So. Like I, like I also said, we have 9-11, we had the, the Boston bombings, all these school shootings, everything that we've come by and figured out to be a hoax, all these false flag attacks, is, you know, why wouldn't it lead up to an EMP? That's a definite possibility. And... It's the perfect way to control the people. You know, nobody had money. Money was was useless at this time. What are you going to use money for? Real money is what? Land, gold, and cattle. Okay, now if you had something to eat, now you had something. If you had some liquor, if you had some water, something of value that people would have of value in that time, now you got something to work with. But, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and get into these scriptures real quick. It's the second Ezra, chapter 15. I'm going to start at uh, verse 14. It says, Woe to the world, them that dwell therein. For the sword their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another with swords in their hands. Okay? It showed that in the, in the movie as well. It showed, um, basically... Like, people not trusting each other. A race war. It, the white guy is the Arab guy. And, you know, the, he let the Arab guy in. But he didn't, you could tell that he was uneasy about it. His family being idiots, you know, they tipped their hand pretty much. But, you know, he was like, nah, I ain't fucking with y'all. Pretty much. He had that spirit, you could tell. But, um, it's going to be a more of a major scale in in uh over here because you already had that division between you know so called blacks uh latinos native americans and the so called white men that that divide is already there so it's going to be magnified in that day okay it says for there should be sedition among men and invading one another they shall not regard their kings nor princes in the course of in the course of their actions shall stand in their power okay so that's where you get rioting, looting, okay? Um, that's where you get also uh, people not uh, caring what, what what the government has to say. Their, their um, decrees, okay? Don't go out after night or after dark. Do this, do that, do this, do that. People not going to care in that day, okay? Because they're going to be all for self. They got to worry about how they're going to feed their kids. They're going to worry about how how they're going to keep warm for the night. How they're going to get uh, to their destination on their journey safely. That's what they're going to be worried about, okay? It says a man should desire to go into a city and should not be able. And we've seen that in the, in the movie, okay? They pulled up in the van and it was a, a roadblock with... Two cops, and they were like, "No, you're not getting in the city. There's no way you get in the city." Okay, and to be in the city is the worst place to be in a um, <clears throat> in a chaos like this. And why? Because the people, people is gonna be the number one enemy in that day. Okay, Lord as well. You know, we have Yahabashim Yashai's protection, um, and spiritual powers eventually get endowed whenever the Lord deems necessary, but until then you gotta go off of your faith, okay? You, you gotta trust in your Habashim Yashai 
and he's going to lead you the right ways. Because it's, it's that when it says all hell should break loose, that's what's going to happen. The shit is going to hit the fan and all hell is going to break loose during Jacob's trouble. Or it says a man should have no pity upon his neighbor, but should destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of a lack of bread and for great tribulation. And that guy experienced that, man. People came in his house for his generator. Why? Because they, they went through, they, he caught them going through the refrigerator. Why? Because they were hungry. Okay? Why? Because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. They were going through it. Okay? So, with that being said, you know, these are the things that we have to look forward to. And, of course, it's going to seem kind of scary to some people. But this is what Yahabashim Yashai deems necessary to to leave this place desolate, okay? Neither root nor branch. Alright? That day that comes that's gonna burn like an oven is speaking about America. And when it comes, that's that's must need to be done. It's necessary evil. Okay, not even evil. It's a good work that America be destroyed because of all the abominations that be done therein. But before that, this is what's going to lead up to it. Alright, this is Jacob's Trouble, a time it never was, okay, which a EMP attack could um, be the catalyst for it. Either way it goes, this is a, 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 good, a good movie to watch to get you in the spirit. Alright, and just to, to get your education up. To, to get your sharpness up, all right? With that being said, I want to give all praise. That's called law to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahshai, by Hashem, Krakadash, the bonus of the apostles and the elders of GMS. Salutes and honors to the elect, all the brothers across the four corners who are enduring in truth and sincerity and all the church who follow. Shalom.